Ed Sam here with me. Ed is a friend of Carmi and I's that's uh, from Seattle. Actually lived in our sober houses for several years. He has about 13 years of sobriety. And, and Ed, we, uh, the first time we came here to LCL Reservation was about the end of June. And Carmi and I thought of you and says, wow, it'd be neat if Ed came. And we had no idea he was coming back. And we had no idea we was going to get a hold of you. But when we knew he was coming back, Carmi kept saying to me, call Ed, call Ed, call Ed. See if he'll come, see if he'll come. So then we gave you a call, and uh, you actually were kind of no, no, open no. at the beginning, right? No, no, I, I reached out for prayer, and then you guys called back. Oh, okay, the trip. okay, okay. Yeah, so I was, I'm sorry. I was yeah, because you was going, yeah, yeah. I was going through some stuff. Uh, I had left the church I was at because I, I was having anger issues and stuff like that, just getting depressed and really wasn't reaching out. And uh, there was people around that I could have reached out to, but I just didn't, and just... Got inside my own head and started, you know, just having just anger anger issues, I guess, because uh, I would, you know, explode and stuff. Like when I was driving and stuff was a good example. That's why I kind of left, you know, because I was driving everybody around. I was driving all the some older members and stuff around the, you know, to appointments and to the store and picking up everywhere for church. Yeah, and and uh, and I found myself getting angry and frustrated you know and I couldn't and I was just afraid I was gonna explode and I didn't want to do that so I, I they all know what's going on and they and they respected you know they didn't say oh no no we can work this right out. So right I, maybe but um so I, anyway I left and then uh, I was just got way way dark again and just uh, and even my neighbors upstairs they were pretty close they didn't know what was going on and to the point of where I would go to the store they would joke and they would say oh you're leaving the house today and then Right, and right. And you know, you bring this up and it made me think of something. Because one of the things, we, when you called and we were praying with you, talking with you, we said, well, maybe you just need to be doing something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never never thought this, that right, what, right, was, right. what has taken place here is, is, wasn't what we were thinking of. No, but. no, just not me either. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? And that wasn't even, uh, that wasn't even, uh, that was before I even thought about or you Yeah, asking, even you know, even mentioned or thought about or anything else. Right, yeah. So not, even, not knowing what would turn out. Right, yeah. It's just um but yeah, I just finally got to the point to where I did cry out and got answered. So and then a couple couple weeks later maybe, something like that, uh Rich and Carmi called again and uh, this time they wanted to know if I was open to coming out up here, you know. And at first I was like, yeah, let's, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, you know, and then, and then they hung up, and I think Rich knew, because, yeah. because uh, the next day, you know, it started coming, you know, um, well, what if this happens, what if I get stuck out there in the middle of nowhere, you know, and just, just off the wall stuff that I know would never happen, but right. it's still creeping in my mind, right. you know, and just, what if I get angry at something, that was my main concern. And you, I think you were afraid to embarrass yourself or embarrass yeah. us or, mm -hmm. or just not be a good reflection of what a Christian would be. And right. And, and even beyond that, to, to, to how um, small my, my, my stuff would go that I would, you know, make into big, you know, mountains right. and stuff like right. that. It was just like how am I perceived, you know, just walking with my limp or not being able to do something, not being able to pitch in and stuff like that. And that was never a problem, ever, you know what I mean, when I got here. So. Right, right. And it, but I just made it more than it was in my mind. And, and, you're all, and you also were thinking that as a native down on this, you know, not part of the tribes that are here, um, how you, you know, could be received. Uh, wasn't that some of the thought of your, in your mind or disrespecting them somehow? Well, or? Yeah, that was in the back of my mind just because of what I've experienced on that side. This is way different over here. And Isn't it? Yes, it is. And... Um, and you basically, if you're visiting, if you come in there with somebody, you know what I mean, you're, you're pretty much accepted. And you're, uh, they're pretty much vouching for you, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, but coming over here, and I didn't know how, how to approach people, right, you know what I mean? And You want to honor the culture of the... Right, the, the, yeah, I, I don't want to disrespect anybody. I don't want to just walk up and say, hey, how's it going, you know, when, when the, maybe they're not like that, you know, and it's... But, you know, we got the nod and everything, and so there's just little tells that I can get to, to where I can open up. Now. I know they want to open up and so I can walk them through. Right, so. right. But um, that was another molehill, you know what I mean? It, wasn't, it was not as big as I made it out to be. Right, And right. I really didn't even have to worry about it. 
and I've learned that as, as I've been here, you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff. This is what God has shown me, because he's opened me eye, open, opening my eyes to where, you know, I'm able to, I was telling this to Debbie too today, I was, I was saying, uh, it's, it's easier for me to walk up to people now, you know, than it is in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Because in Seattle, you're not accepted, I mean, even if you know the know the person or work with the person, for it still takes a little while to get, you know, until you're talking or whatever, and it's on the street. No, that's not going to happen. So you see, uh, so you know, we've talked about all this, Carmen. I see tremendous difference here, and even compared to Arkansas, even though Arkansas is much more rural and people are friendlier. But would you confirm when when we talk, we we talk. This is different environment. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and that, and it's a positive, not negative. That's a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, and it's part of the they call it the you know the small town thing. You know, what I mean, I felt it in Fallon, but out here it's it's uh, all over. You know what I mean? In, in Fallon, you got pockets of still people that don't accept until you you've been there for that years. So right. Time, you know. Right. But um, but yeah, everybody's accepting right away and willing to meet you and uh, give you a smile and uh, they want to talk. They want you know they want to they want to interact with you and uh, see what's going on there actually ask you questions that's what I like about it is like uh, where are you from and I, I've lived my childhood here you know this past couple, right. 10 days or whatever we've been here so many times it's, uh, it's great you know what I mean and, so uh, so what what do you think the the what's the greatest thing that has helped you by being here because Carmen and I said if the only thing that happens is Ed's life is touched by him coming here, it was worth it to us. And we've seen a whole lot more than that, but we've seen a lot happen with you. So I'd like to share what's, what's kind of happened to you spiritually and all that, and then how you've seen some people change without mentioning names and giving too many specifics, but how you've seen some people change because of you being here, which I, I don't know if you thought that that could really happen with you being uh, here. Not really. I mean, you know, when you the, hope, right? Oh yeah. When when I got when I got the call and stuff like that, and he called, and when I finally did make my decision, you know, and it took a couple of days, and uh, we did have to go over it again. And you were like, "Yeah, I know." You know, <laughs> I knew you were going to have some yeah, some some, some reservations and yeah. some questions and all that. But, uh, like I said, I was I was happy and on fire for a day or so, and then it got. But then after the second one, and I committed to come in, and we got the train and everything like that. It was like a, a, a weight started to lift, I should say. You mm -hmm. could tell I left Seattle, mm -hmm. and it just dropped away, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. But um, as far as all that... So what, what's in, happened to you since uh, in 10 days? Uh, meeting people, you know, and um, <clears throat> coming here looking for help. And uh, not really, you know, in the, the space that I was in my head, you know, and that was one of my doubts too. Was like, what am I gonna say? You know, I've been living wrong. I didn't know about living wrong, but I've been, you know, treating myself wrong for the past a long time. Six yeah, months. I mean, there's been there's been there been times we've seen you as the dry drunk, right? And yeah. and, and you've seen that. Oh yeah, people have questioned my sobriety yeah. a lot. You know yeah, I mean, and and it, it, it's it's the way I am. It's the way I come across and stuff like that because I do get loud. If I get excited, I get loud. And, but if I'm happy, you can tell I'm happy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm talking to you. You tell I'm right. I'm interested in you, and I, and I and I and I know and I want more. You know what I mean? But when I get angry and, or even a little bit, and I just or read things wrong. wrong. You just get right. something I, gets in your head and mm -hmm. and, and that. But and then you know what? That fell away here because I came here and you know like like, like I said, how am I going to be perceived or how am I going to approach people? And there was none of that. And. Um, you know, so does it take the pressure off of you to, that you just can relate differently? Yeah, yeah, and it was it, it didn't it didn't take long. It was like the first day. I was able to walk up to somebody and just say, "Hey, what's going on? My name is Ed." You know, da, 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 da. And, and you know, at first you get the okay, and then but then after a second, it just fell away. You know, just, that's what's different about this place, and uh, and um, they helped me tremendously. You know, just. Um, Listening to stories and interacting and hearing the messages, man, this whole 10 days or whatever was tailor made for me. You know, I, <laughs> there was a couple of sermons that people paid money, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to come and get what I got for free. Really? Yeah. You, you feel that? I do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I walked away. And when you walk away from them seminars and stuff like that, you don't expect to see anybody. I expect to see people. I expect to 
hear from people. Yeah. And I'm going to reach out and keep in touch. You know, I don't do that. You know what I mean? You don't do that. No, I don't. And, and, and all of a sudden, you connect with some people here. Now, so how do you feel you've helped some people? What do you think you've done? Just by being there and listening and, and relating. And, um, you know, just uh, a couple guys I've been talking to and stuff like that. They're just at ease, you know what I mean? I'm not a counselor. I'm not, you know, I'm not the law. Right, right. I'm just right. another guy. I'm just another Indian, you know? Right, right. And that's what I like about because we can sit there and we can... Yeah, we can talk serious and stuff like that. We can have prayer and stuff like that. But still, at the same time, man, we can just crack it up and yeah. joking around. And, you know, and, and it, it was easy here to, to just start joking around real quick because and then they don't take, you know, don't take it the wrong way. Right, right. And that's what I was saying. And, uh, man, I miss, I miss, because uh, there's a few uh, people I've let go back in, in Seattle and stuff like that just from being the way I am and just getting distant and stuff like that. And I'm like, I miss them. I miss that, that uh, you know, the inside jokes right, or, the, right, you know, right. or them even knowing what I'm talking about because I'm, I'm older and right. a lot of people I talk to are like, what, you know? Right, like, oh. right. But uh, there's people that uh, know, what hap- you know what happens when we're on a, a different level. And uh, I, I felt like that coming here. And, and uh, so you've, you've been with some Native Americans, you've been with some white guys, you've been some that are Native American, Mexican, and who knows what. Yeah, yeah. And none of that matters, does it? None of it didn't matter, no. Uh-uh. Um, went to the men's group in town. We, we've done stuff here. and Everybody's been here. and It didn't matter. It just didn't matter. The, the people mattered. And the, and the contact mattered. You know what I mean? And just uh, the stories mattered. And, uh, and you feel for them. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what makes me want to to keep in that connection. You know what I mean? There's a couple guys that I am going to keep talking to on the phone. And texting and stuff like that. And you know they need that. You know yeah. their stories, and you know I they need, need that. that. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I need that. There you go. You know, there you go. See, that's the good part, right? Two way street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I came here looking for help, and I ended up helping people, and they helped me. And this is like going to the senior center or something like that, just coming in there, and you know, very open and very, you know, say goodbye, and and I was. I was like, oh, what are you doing out in Seattle? I said, oh, I'm not working right now. You know, it's kind of hard for me to get used to that. So, But I used to cook when I was down there. They're like, oh, yeah, man, you can cook here. They were telling me, I was like, man. <laughs> but, you know, I hear that. That's, they're so open like that. It's just like a lot of people just like, they're, they're wondering why I'm going back. Yeah, you know? yeah. Do, you, do you feel like like there's almost a, uh, an expectation or a desire or a want to don't leave? Do you, do you kind of feel that? <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel that. You know, and it started. And it's real. And it's not. It's not. Oh, it's yeah. not a fake thing. Oh yeah, you know, and, and when it started to feel like that, it wasn't about being here. It was, it was, you know, it was about the change that happened to me. You know what I mean? The way I felt, and uh, the the main thing was that I knew. Well, I don't know for sure now because you know, the way I feel now, I'm looking. I got a different outlook and stuff like that. I have a plan of what I want to do when I go back. But that, you know, but it could change, you know, and, and I'm fine with that. But um, it was a, a feeling that I didn't want to be in Seattle where I was because I felt, because of the way it made right. me feel. And right, like right. And, and, you know, I didn't feel like I, I could get the help I needed. But at the same time, you know, I wasn't asking for the help. Right, you know what right. I mean? So that's right. on me too. But uh, so there is a different outlook and for me to take back. And I, and, I, and I was telling myself that, you know, um, I think I shared that one time here. What is I'm here to get some tools to take back with me, you know, to to do that. And then I thought about it a couple of days later. He's like, maybe I'm here to get the whole armor, <laughs> you know, not just the tools, you know. Right. But so so then the last thing would be to, to say the difference in you and, and the change and the hope and the just a different perspective. While you're here, we find out that your housing is totally changing. Oh. Completely. Yeah. I mean, in the end of December, you, you you don't have a place to stay as of now. Right. You it's not like you could work on anything while you're here and anything else. Right. But um, you would have tripped pretty bad on oh, that yeah. at one time. Yeah. And at one point, I probably would have done some stupid even right. Wanted to go home. You know? Yeah. For no reason because it's already set. You know what I mean? Right. But, and so so describe that how how that feels to you to. 
it doesn't matter. Whatever. It's like oh, yeah, it's yeah. going to work out. Yeah, I was on the phone with you when you when you when, you, when he was when right. he said that. You know, yeah. I beat him out by December thirty first, and I didn't. It didn't register at first, and then when I thought about it, it was like okay, and then I started worried about Hannah, what she was going right. to say. Right. Right. I worried about them more. Cause right. And you saw their part, response. Yeah. I saw and her. you see the response when you know the Lord and you have a relationship with them and you're walking with them. Than, than when you don't. And so for you, 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 you got the tools while you're here. So I think, you know, I was kind of prepared for you ahead of time to, oh, to be able to be prepared for that. And then you, you hear, and they're, again, their situation is much tougher than yours right. and everything else. But there was not any, any you know, it's, it's like it's all disaster and there's no way it can work out. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the situation is harder. But, but if, you, if you know the Lord and you know he takes care of you. Yes, sir. It's a lot easier, isn't it? Yes, and and it, even at that time when I heard the when I heard the phone call, we're sitting in the car driving and stuff. Like yeah, that. you're you're hearing it. Dude. Yeah, I'm hearing it, and, and and in my mind, I'm just like, man, this guy's just opening another door for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> he, he, he's hitting me hard. He's hitting me like waves. And right, sh right, sh right, up right. I come here and I get accepted and stuff like that, and people are. are you know, coming to me and talking to me. And, the, and can I say the crazy thing is, if you didn't have any place to live, you could come here and you know that exactly. it would work out, you know right? I mean? That's was, something, right? Yes, it is. It's very much something because, like I say about the open doors and stuff like that, it's just that uh, when I did, I don't want to say make a decision, but when I did feel like I wasn't going to be in Seattle anymore, this is, you know... I'm drawing a line. I'm, right. There's night right. and day. You know. Right. There's, there's right. other things out here, and even people I was talking to on the on the phone, I was telling them that, and they were like, they were like, yeah, you know. <laughs> they they could get it right. They then, got you, it. Yeah, yeah. And they live there. Yeah. Know, yeah. And they understand yeah. it. Yeah. You know? They they would get it if you took off and and said, oh, yeah. forget this. They um, they understand there that. There's no questions about why or anything. yeah. Trying to talk me into yeah. or anything yeah. like yeah. that. But at the same time, you know. Everything, like I said, about the waves and stuff like that, everything just came together all of a sudden. It's like a perfect storm, you know what I mean? My, my nephews all got in touch with me again, and then when I got the news about the housing, I already knew that I was welcome up here. Right. You know, it it right. wasn't just from like one person, it's right. from a lot of people. Right. I mean, right. Wow. They'd be yeah. happy if you were here. Yeah, I think so. I'd be happy here <laughs> yeah. too. It'd just be, you know, it's just. But what is God's will? You know, yes, that's, yes, sir. Because you know Carmen and I. I mean, you know the receptivity we've gotten here, and mm -hmm. and I think you know we're we're thrilled to death with all that's gone on here. Right. And but if it isn't God's will, we don't want to be here, and so we're not going to try to make that happen or anything else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't you know? I've tried to force a lot of stuff in my life, and it never works out like that. So, and that's one another thing I've learned here too is just to. Let's just do it. You know what I mean. If it happens, it yeah. Happens. There's some there's some last minute things we've done here when it yeah. goes to ministry and everything else, and see. And uh, you know, yeah, we make plans and stuff like that, but it's not like we have a, a set you know time. Where right. Somebody's gonna get in trouble if right. he's here. You know. Right. I mean? It's just totally different. You know what I mean? And, and like I said about the perfect storm is that that so many doors open up there. My nephews were like, "Come back here." My other nephew in Montana is like, "Hey, come visit me." And you know. And that could all still happen, you know right. what I mean? It, right. Just for visits, you know, I'm excited about that too, because I've been alone for too long, and I've told them that. I text them every day now. So what would be your last word for someone that's watching this and they're, they're going through stuff, maybe they're, they're struggling with trying to get off of, you know, alcohol, or they're struggling over guilt and shame, they're struggling over issues in their life, they're, they're you know, discouraged. What would you, what would you say? What would, I would you say? Um, Reach out and don't try to work through it by yourself because that never works. I mean, you might think you're strong enough, and I did. I did for a long time. And sometimes you can get by with it for a little while, but um, without help, you're not going to make it. You're going you're gonna to fall back. You're going to make excuses, and uh, you'll fight yourself in your head. Yeah. And, 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 and you'll end up hating yourself, and you'll end up doing it on purpose. You know what I mean? You reach out. As soon as you feel that, that need or that want or hopelessness, it's a good one. That's horrible. And that's what we've been able to do more than anything else, I think, since we've been here, is to give some hope to some people oh, that yeah. were hopeless. Yeah, yeah. And then it gives us more hope. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how yeah. it works. You know, yeah, it's crazy. It, it, it is crazy how it works because 
they get that, you know, they get that spark, and then it gives you that little spark, and then even though I'm leaving and stuff like that, there's another guy just like you in Seattle, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and I've right. had people say, hey, man, I'm going to show up at your door. <laughs> I'm not going to turn them away. <laughs> no way, you know what right. I mean? It's going to work somehow, you know what I mean? If that's what it takes, you know, to, to get you out of your hold and to, and to uh, get you amongst people that really care about you, you know, not just your friends that are, right. that are looking for something from you. And that's what I've been telling my nephews and stuff like that, too. It's just that, you know, surround yourself with uh, people that care about you and love you, you know what I mean? And, and to do that, you know, you've got to show some love, too. You know, right. you can't just walk right. up and, hey, I need help, but I got, uh, there's a, a show I watched one time, this guy was stuck on a cliff, and they threw him a, they threw him a rope, you know, he's out there all night long, and they threw him a rope, and he puts his rope on, he's like, I'm saved, you know, they're like, start climbing, come on, right, you know, right. you got to right. do your part. Right, you know? right, yeah, there you go, yeah. You know, so, you know, yeah. even if it's just a little bit, even if it's showing up, that could be your part, you know what I mean? Showing up and asking for help, yes, but after that, you know, because... You're going to help somebody. Well, the good news is that we've had people show up for several nights and we see some change taking place in life by doing something that they may have not done before right. and just reaching out and having hope. So, yeah. All righty, Ed. Is there is hope. Don't think that there... Don't be hopeless because you know, there's somebody out there waiting on you to call. Yeah, yeah, amen. Thank you for sharing. Okay.